So we're going to be looking at local and global coordinate systems and understanding what they are. I'm going to use the part design for this demonstration because we've got something called a body in here. If I create the body, we see we have a body with an origin. Now these are the axes and planes of this body. Press the space bar, we can see them in there. If I come up to view and toggle axis cross, we see we have an axis cross here. Now this axis cross is the global coordinate system. If I right click on the body and transform it, we see we move the body away from the global coordinate system. And what we've done is offset that body from that global corner. This point here is 0, 0, 0 in 3D space, in global space. And this point here, if we hide the planes of this body, is the offset from here. So we look at the body and look at the placement. This position is 36 millimeters along the Y and it's been offset 36 millimeters from the point of origin 0, 0, 0 along the Y axis. This axis creates a coordinate system as well. If I create a sketch along the XY plane and hit OK, you notice that the sketch is positioned in the point of origin of the body axis this time, not the point of origin of our global axis, our global 3D space. If I close that and look at the sketch, it has an attachment and also it has a support. And this is where we placed it along the XY plane. We've attached it to the XY plane and we've attached it flat on that XY plane. And we can see the attachment at the moment hasn't moved away from that center. But we can see the position is all zeros. If we come down to the placement, which is underneath, this is read only, you'll notice this is all zeros as well. This is the placement of the sketch relative to this body. And this is the attachment of the sketch relative to its support. So on that sketch, let's sketch something. Now you can see that we've got the axis of the body that's still sitting there. And this point here is the axis of the sketch itself. So if I place something on this axis and that's connected to that point like so, and close, you can see it's sitting at the same axis of the body. So now we've got the sketch. Observe that the attachment hasn't changed yet. It's still zeroed and the placement position hasn't changed. Let's add 10 to the X and 10 to the Y. So it's moved along the X and Y of the attachment. Now if we look at the placement, we can see that the placement has changed. This is read only by the way, we can't edit this. So if we move our X and our Y, our placement changes as well. So we go for 10 along the X, 20 along the Y, and 30 along the Z. And we get the same here. Now watch what happens when we change its support. So let's come up, look at the support. We've got X, Y plane. I'm going to click on that, clear this out, and place it along the X, Z plane, and hit OK. We're now over here and it's oriented against the XZ plane. So before it was on the XY plane, so sitting on here, flat face. Now it's flat face along here. So it switched planes. It's like taking it from the floor and sticking it on the wall. Now, if we think about that analogy that we've taken it from the floor and stuck it on the wall, then our position in X, Y, Z of the global space will have changed and also it will be changed in the body as well so let's have a look at the sketch and compare the attachment to the placement 
So the position is still 10, 20, 30, x, y, z. But the position here now, we have got swapping of values. So we've got 10 minus 30 and 20. So this is relative to its support. And this is relative to the base, which is the body. If I transform the body, and hit OK, and now look at the sketch, and the placement, and the position, nothing has changed. And the attachment should still be the same. Nothing has changed in here. But it's obviously in a different position in 3D space. Now the reason we have this is to make our life easier. If you think about it, if we was trying to position this, this is now along this plane, so a sketch, if you look at the sketch, the plane of the sketch is infinite. So if we stretch the sketch out, this is infinite now. And we're positioning it along the X and the Y of the sketch here. So if we were trying to position this using our global coordinate system, our 3D coordinate system here, then this would be really hard to position. So if I take this vertex here, you can see, if I roll over it and look down to the left, you can see that's 23 by 41 by 32. So if you can just think about trying to model in FreeCAD, trying to enter that global coordinate with all your sketches, then it will be a waste of time. You wouldn't actually be able to position that exactly by coming in and placing the X, Y, and Z position. And this is the reason why we have this local coordinate system. It's like having a piece of paper on a table. The table has its own coordinate system. That shows you whereabouts a piece of paper is on that table. The table also has a coordinate system in the room. So you can think of the room as a GPS coordinate system, and then your table is five foot away from the left wall and six foot away from the back wall and also has an elevation and then on top of that is your piece of paper that is two foot away from the edge of the table a foot away from the bottom of the table so you can position that anywhere on your desk without worrying about trying to position it via gps on that desk or in that room the support is this desk you can change the support to the wall so your support now is flat on the wall utilizing the local positioning saying it's two foot away from the left hand side and a foot away from the top now if you take that example the z axis of that piece of paper will point in a different way if it's on the table or on the wall and that's what you're seeing here is that this sketch is actually flat face and the normal of this sketch is always the z so the normal is here z runs this way and you can see that by clicking on the sketch changing the z and it moves up and down and you can see also this plane is moving up and down because it will move with that sketch though the plane is infinite freecad just shows you that moving with the sketch so we've changed the support and place it along a different plane now the XY plane where the Z runs in the same way if I brought back the body if I rotate the body around to be in line with your axis across the global coordinate system you can see the Z now runs this way this can be a bit awkward to comprehend when you're very first starting out and you're creating let's delete those a new body and a new sketch along the XY plane okay and we create something in here and you can see the Z is running up this way and we create say a circle and close that and pad that okay and then we create another sketch along here new sketch and let's create a square this time like so close that and we'll pad the Z of this sketch that's created, this pad, is running 
with the normal along the z-axis. So if we move in that sketch along the attachment and the position you can see at the moment is zero, 0, then we're moving along the x. And if I show that sketch, there we go there, you can see it moving along that face. And the y, they're all the same as this, but they're not really because it's a total different corner system. If I take that pad and bring this up to 30 and create a sketch on the side of this pad here, new sketch, and create a circle on here, close, and we'll pad that circle, okay. Now the Z of this sketch is actually running this way, which can confuse us because X runs this way, but it's in a different coordinate system. So now if I change the position of this sketch, and if I was thinking, well, I'm lining myself with the global coordinate system, then we'll change it along. I want to push it up this way, which we'll think is the Z. And then, well, it moves out. It moves out this way. So if I wanted to move it along this way, I would either move it along the Y or the X, depending on how it's attached. We can see it's moving along those different axes there. So it's moving X along this way, and this is how it's attached. If we look at the sketch, I'll click that sketch, we can see the X is here, the Y is here, and the Z will run normal to sketch because it's a 2D object. So it runs in and out of the object, and it's running this way. So anything mapped to this face, let's come over to the part and create a cylinder. So we've got a cylinder in here somewhere and we can see it right click transformed, bring the cylinder up and give it some dimensions. Radius of 10, there we go. I can map this to this face by clicking on the cylinder we can see it's got support, which there's nothing there. Let's come into the map mode, click that, and we've got selecting and select that face. It has attached to that face, so you can see it sitting there. And we'll move that along the Y, so in direction Y, and we'll move it this way. But it's actually moving, if you're looking at global space, it's actually moving along the Z. But the way it's attached is Y, X, and Z is normal to that face. This face here is normal. So going out this way. And then OK. So we've got that cylinder mapped to that face. And we can move that cylinder around, mapping it to the other faces. Let's clear that and map it to this face. And OK. Now the Z runs this way, normal to that face. So let's come into the attachment position and change the Z. And we see it moves out this way. So we create an offset between that face and that cylinder. So the reason for this local coordinate system is to make life easier. Maybe a bit hard to get used to, but if you think of the alternative where you have just the global coordinate system and you had, say, the body transformed like this, and then you was trying to place, bring the origin, so you can see that there, and you can see our global corner system is at this angle. Let's make this even more awkward. I right click transform in and bring this around. If we was trying to place a sketch on here and we can simulate that by hiding the origin and we'll create a sketch over in the sketcher and create a sketch and I'm going to go XY plane. 
So this is the XY plane of the global coordinate system. And you can see how it's aligned there because we're using the base sketch because I came straight to the sketcher. And what I've done is sketched along the global XY plane. I close that. If I bring back the origin, which is the body, you can see what plane inside the origins. And we've got this one, this sketch here, which is on the global XY plane. We come up to sketch, reorientate sketch, XZ plane, OK, and close that. We can see that we're on this plane. So we're just trying to work with this and trying to get it attached to or place some kind of feature on here. We just had that global position in. Then I would have to come into the placement position and angle and change this somehow and have to change my axes to get them in the right position and it's going to take me an age. So hopefully that's answered the question regarding local and global coordinate systems and why we have them. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.